to begin our discussion on gas turbine engines, we might review just some terms, just so that they're in our in our head. So in terms of energy, we can have potential energy due to the height h, or sometimes height z. Um, we can have kinetic energy due to the velocity. There is pressure energy, or uh, pressure by volume. And there is heat energy, and, and then there are other types. But these uh, energy types here, uh, they're going to be important in our discussion of uh, gas turbine en uh, engines. The first two you will have been familiar with. Uh, the second two, uh, we might have to uh, re-familiarize ourselves with them. The other thing we want to uh, review is Newton's laws of motion. So Newton's first law said a body will continue in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it's acted upon by an external force. Um, what that means is this aircraft will just stay there unless it's acted on by some force. So normally it's weight, so weight will uh, try to bring it to the ground. We have to counteract that with lift, and you know when we when we move forward, there needs to be a thrust force, and to to counteract that, there is a there is a drag force. So that's Newton's uh, laws of motion. His second law states that the force is proportional to the change of momentum. Sorry. The force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum. So here we have, you know, an object with 50 kilograms on it, and here we have one with uh, 100 kilograms. And we need to, if we're going to apply a force there, well, the force is the rate of change of momentum. Well, momentum is mass times velocity, so it's mass times velocity. Uh, you know, let's say it's moving in in, in this direction. Up here has a velocity v2, down here has a velocity v1. So it's the mass times velocity 2 minus mass times velocity 1 all over t. So this is the rate of change of, mo of momentum. And uh, we can take the m outside, and then uh, v2 minus v1 is all over t is just acceleration. So this is change of velocity. So force is equal to mass by acceleration. That is the second law. And for his third law, uh, he says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if we have a balloon and you know it's full of air, if we let the air out, so the air goes out the back, that will be the action, and then the reaction will be the balloon going forward. So that's Newton's three laws. Now what interests us is how are these applied to an aircraft? All right, so we have an, uh, this is the wing of the aircraft and this is the engine underneath. We take a mass of air in, so the air has a velocity, V1. We put it through the engine and when it comes out, it has a velocity V2. So we do that all over some time. So we have the mass of air, and we have V2 minus V1. So that's our mass by acceleration. So that's our force, and we call that force thrust. And that's how a jet engine produces thrust. It takes a mass of air in at a particular velocity, it puts it out the back of the engine at a much faster velocity, and that creates thrust. The air is coming in, and it's being pushed out the back. That's the action. Then the reaction will be the engine going forward. So if the air is going out the back, the engine will then go forward. And that's Newton's three laws all encompassed together in, in this one example. 
So force is mass by acceleration. We say the velocity of the air out the back is the velocity of the jet. The velocity of the air coming in is the velocity of the aircraft. You know, if the aircraft is flying forward at a 100 meters per second, the air is going in at 100 meters per second. T is the time it takes to go from uh, here to here. Or we can go M over T, which is the mass flow, which is kilograms per second. And we look at that later on. Here he is, the mass flow. And we, we represent mass flow as M dot. So the thrust is the mass flow, so in kilograms per second, by the change in velocity between the jet and the aircraft. And that's what propels the jet engine forward.